Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Ark Survival Evolved with me, Lathrix, and welcome to a whole host of changes. It does seem like at the moment, every time I put the game down, another update or ten creep in and change the game for the better, and this is no exception. The first change I want to cover very, very briefly is this. Look, the Dimorphodons are now able to be carried on your shoulder as little hunting pets. If you throw them at an enemy while you're in combat, of course it will go and attack them. If you have the pet on follow, it will simply come back to you after the fight is over. Um, if it survived, that is. But the big change is actually um, a new dinosaur that's been added today, and this is really exciting to me. However, I don't actually believe it is a dinosaur, so I'm just going to say animal. A new animal has been added, and I've already learned the um, recipe for its... Where are you? For its saddle. Now let's see if I can actually find them so I can see the name of the darn thing. There we go. The... that thing. Which I will just simply call the... Parasur. Because I, I was going to call it ju just the para, but then I realised I call these things para all the time, and that would just be confusing. So we're going to call it the Parasur. Um, I haven't heard the name pronounced ever, so after the episode, or halfway through the episode, I'll go and check how it's actually pronounced. But that doesn't matter all that much. Essentially, it is a medium-sized pack animal. You can even have platform saddles on it to make a mobile base, and that, to me, is wonderful. Because it's similar to the Bronto and the Plesiosaur mounts, uh, which will be fantastic. So, we're going to go ahead and go straight after it, that's the first thing we'll be doing, and checking out its new saddle. Well, before we go and we do something rash, I should really make sure I've made the saddle. So, it seems like it's quite expensive, but of course it is a platform saddle. Uh, we do already have all the stuff we need, thankfully we do have a lot of metal from our previous expedition still. I mean, we have... how much do we have here? We have 334 here and about 200 left on the Bronto herself. Okay, so we need a little bit of fibre, then we can make the saddle. We should also go ahead and get ourselves a load of berries, as I do believe these are herbivores. In fact, I'm almost certain they are, as they look rather like giant camels. I also quickly looked up how to pronounce the name, and honestly, I am none the wiser. It seems like um, on the internet there are A, lots of conflicting opinions, and B, not many of those opinions in, in the first place. So, I'll just call it what I called it before, or I'll just call it by its name once I name the thing. There we go, and this should be everything we need for the, there we go, the platform saddle and every other saddle possible. Now, there were other things added in this recent batch, and I'll be getting onto those a different day. Today, I really want to focus on this animal because if I ever do the nomad mode, this is probably the way I'm going to do it. Start off with this lovely creature and uh, move on to the Bronto or perhaps stick with this creature the whole time. So give myself a level 1 of these to start off with and then move on from there. Do I already have no mountable animals there other than the dragon? That's rather silly. Come forth, nameless um, Dimorphodon. This little thing was halfway in the ocean and I saved it by taming it. It was rather, rather cute. Thankfully I had a lot of prime meat on my hand because I didn't realise that upon taming it it would sink like a rock into the water. Thankfully the prime meat was a lot faster. Do I really have almost nothing on you? Uh. Okay, back in a second once I've gathered some berries and um, started our hunt for the elusive animal. So the hunt begins. So from what little information there is currently on the wiki page and in the general internet, because I, I'm recording this a few hours after the patch has been released, you can find them on cliff sides and in large open fields, aka no trees. So I know exactly where I'm going and that is to the centre of the map and near the original base we set up because there is that large location right next to it which is just a huge plain. I'm hoping we'll find one there because if we do it's not too far to actually um, take back. I almost flew straight past this thing because it was hiding behind that rock, but there we go, the very first Parasair of this world. So let's have a quick look, see what level it is. I'm, I'm hoping quite quite low level, but um, let's find out. Well, high level and low level would both be good. It would be also good if I could actually get off this bird without bugging out. There we go. Let's see, what level are you, friend? You are a level 40 male. Pretty much in the middle, then. Not quite as large as I was thinking, actually, because they were depicted as the largest of land mammals and terrifying and all this other stuff. And, well, 
To be fair, though, I am only this big, so yeah, that is absolutely ridiculously huge. It just seems so small when you've been surrounded by dragons and stuff for such a long time. So, uh, let's have a quick look, see if you can tame these things peacefully. It doesn't say you can, but you never know. They seem friendly enough. Nope, you can't tame them peacefully, and I'm going to assume they fight back, but I don't know. Grim, you are currently on passive, just checking. Okay then, let's start the taming process. One shot in the butt. Okay, it's not the fastest thing in the world, that's good to see. So we can probably just outpace it without use of our- Oh, no we cannot! No we cannot! Stop reloading! Hi Grim! Oh, he just got one hit on Grim there at the very end. Well, we've shot him three times, that's, that's a lot of um, torpor, plus the effect obviously is now taking its toll. That thing is actually remarkably quick. We might have to um, try and lure it down this cliff and then stand on the top. If that's possible. Okay, there we go. And I'm hoping it can't climb back up as easily as it climbed down. I think it stopped chasing us now, so we can't really test straight away, but there we go. One trank arrow. Should get a little bit further away from the edge, actually, or it's going to hurt Dusk. Uh, not Dusk, I mean Grim. Hmm, that looks so close to being able to climb up. Come on, my little buddy. Why did I go for the head for? Well, I'm actually glad I missed, because that would have done a lot of damage per torpor gained. Oh, this is just about keeping him there. I have to keep on moving, because he keeps getting a little bit higher. But he falls down there. Okay, let's just keep doing this dance until he falls over. Finally, that took a lot of shots. Hello, my newly uh, unconscious Paraceratherium. I think I actually got that right. Okay, here we go. Uh, Paraceratherium. What a bloody difficult name to say as someone who doesn't really know much about dinosaurs. Let's have a look, see. What's your favourite food then? Which one will you eat first? I can hear you eating, but I can't see the purple going down. I'm watching. I'm watching. No, yep, yeah, purple. It's always purple. It's always purple. Everyone loves purple. So I finally found one place with the pronunciation guide, and it's a really old dinosaur book. Um, I found it on Google Books. It took a lot of searching. Paraceratherium. Paraceratherium. You have no idea how long I've been doing that to myself, chanting that. And I'm probably wrong, because it's got a very simple kind of pronunciation guide, but then I can't find any anyone saying it. I've even looked up a BBC freaking documentary, and it, and it says the, the um, other variation, because there's two different kinds of them, and not this one. And <laughs> oh, back in a second when this thing's hopefully tamed. It doesn't seem to be taking all that long, honestly. We've got quite a few berries, but I wish I brought more Medjo. I don't know why I didn't. I guess I'll just be harvesting berries to pass the time, honestly. How many of you noticed that I had 100 Mejo berries in my hand? Whoops. So I may have been AFK getting a drink and missed the little dossier thing pop up, so let's just quickly go ahead and have a look at that. There we go. So what do I actually want to look at? Honestly, ju just the domesticated. Is there anything special about this animal in terms of um, harvesting? A beast of burden, second to the Brontosaurus. I it's an excellent worker, it is a naturally friendly animal and not afraid of humans. However, despite its normally calm demeanour, when it or its owner is provoked by aggression, the Paraceratherium, oh, I hope we got that right, can quickly become a real threat to the attacker and will use its girth to its advantage in combat. It can hold lots of weight, it's strong, and it's very tameable. Uh, yeah, it all seems pretty good. So, let's give it its saddle and land Grim on that. A little bit of weird lag there. Hello, friend. Yeah, it, it, it ate all of the Mejo Berries and considerably high amount of all the others, but it wasn't too long to tame. It was a full, um, I think it was one day, day cycle, then this is the morning of the next day cycle. Oh, that's so much smaller than the Bronto. I wonder how much you can actually hold. I haven't actually had a look at the stats yet. Oh, no, no, stay still. This will be a million times more difficult if you keep moving. Let me just land my little um, Grim here. There we go, turn Grim around. Nope, I forgot that these things can't turn. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. No, they can turn, sorry. They can't um, move backwards. It's really weird. There we go. 
Really? That didn't hurt me? Oh, that's good. Because they have actually recently upped um, damage from falling, which is a nightmare. So let's just have a quick look. See, drop the stones. Okay, weight is 570. That's not bad. Food is remarkably high. That's fine. Stamina is meh. But, we, but, that, that, but, but that all depends on how fast its stamina actually goes down. So let's just go on there. Start running. Uh, it's not too slow. I, I feel like Grim's about to be knocked off by the tree. Nope. Yeah, that's not too slow at all. Certainly faster than the Bronto. So it has no alternate fire. Um, yeah, it seems decent to me. And certainly would be a good um, pack animal, if nothing else. It can also harvest berries. Quite efficiently, in fact. Let's see how many berries it can harvest at once, though. Can it harvest trees? It can indeed harvest trees with the same kind of efficiency as a Bronto. I like it. It's very e it's very easy to, to um, ride, unlike the Bronto. I mean, that's a nightmare to use. Okay, well let's get this back to Herbivore Island, and we'll start figuring out a way to use its tiny little um, thing on the back, its tiny little saddle. I spy with my little eye something very interesting, which I haven't seen in the wild for quite some time. Can you see what I can see, Sir and Sir Etz? Is that? Is it? Yes, I think it is. It is an Alpha Dodo. <laughs> Oh, wow, you can tame these things passive. <gasps> you can tame dodos passively now. Please say you can tame dodos passively now. No, just the apex dodo. That's still freaking awesome, nonetheless. Uh, we have no decent berries left, though. Okay, well, this is a bit of a diversion, but I definitely have to tame a new alpha dodo. It just has to happen. Here you go. It's not your favourite, but... That's pretty quick. Okay, I'm just going to stick around here, gather some berries, and tame the little thing. Okay, a little warning to anyone who has this mod. It turns out these things are actually aggressive if you get too close to them. I did not know that, honestly. Simple matter of never knew that. So, there we go. We're going to tame it with it being knocked out. Are you happy now, you stupid little brainless thing? Uh, will I need any more food? I don't think so. I think that'll be enough. I'll get some more just in case. Then we can use Grim to um, put it on the back of the saddle and we can continue our little merry march. We still need to... Um, we do definitely still need... Oh, there we go. To make a bridge from the main island to our little herbivore island just because at the moment I don't like having these kind of creatures swim because of how big they are and how slow they are. It just makes me feel like it's going to be killed by a piranha. Even though there's not piranhas in the ocean, I'm aware of this, it just feels like it might do. Of course, sharks are more our worry. I'm just going to throw this thing further away so it won't attack the dodo when, I, when I'm working with it. Hello, dodo. Do you want to be my bestest friend? Yoink. And let's gently put you there. Really? There's no movement when you let go? It just goes straight down? Well, I did not know that either. Come on, Dodo. Dodo. I... just... no movement at all? I, I, I'm going full speed and I let go and it just lets go directly where I am? That's so... like, against my... against my, um... What's the word I'm looking for here? Instincts. Anyway, back to the island. Upon entering the water, what I feared happened. We were attacked by sharks. However, it seems like this lovely little creature, and by little I mean huge creature, can more than deal with them. A level 50 and a level 4 shark very easily dispatched there. And let's go ahead and quickly give ourselves some bonuses then. So, what did you earn, my friend? You've earned some more carry weight and some more melee damage and some more health. It turns out a level 50 shark is actually rather good for leveling. Also, unlike the Bronto, it seems that when you're in the water, it's a lot more stable above the water, as in the platform, that is. So, my birds haven't had to jump off once yet, but the Bronto, it is higher up from the water, but certain actions dip you underneath, and then if you've got, let's say, an Argent Avis, it will instinctively start to fly because it's not allowed in the water, which causes all sorts of issues when you're trying to, well, get them across. 
So yay for that. Home sweet home. Time for a little bit of testing before we call this episode quits. But before we do that, I want to discuss something that was just updated on the ARC wiki. Apparently in the hours of recording this episode, things have been updated. Well, not so much updated, but accepted into fact. And the wiki has been updated as so. So you can actually find these animals extremely commonly up here here in the soon to be snow region you can also find them rarely in this kind of jungly marshy area and finally uncommonly you can find them in the area we found ours so we simply got lucky more so than anything else so what do we need to do then before we end the episode well first of all I want to see how well this thing is at harvesting because I didn't really get to test that out all that much. So here's a lovely patch of um, of greenery here. Let's see how well we can harvest the area. Not too badly, similar to a trike honestly, so that's actually fantastic. Another thing is I want to see just how good this thing is at fighting and sadly those parasaurs over there are pretty good targets for that. So hello friends, what levels are you? Well, apparently they do um, stampeding damage like the Bronto and Rex does, in that it does damage to things as it runs over them, but wow, that was a lot of damage. That's fantastic. So overall then, they seem to be really good pack animals, really powerful, a bit difficult to control, but nowhere near as bad as the Bronto, and, well, quite quick, which is lovely, honestly, so that's epic. Let's just uh, park ourselves here. And I want to go ahead and build some stuff just so we can have a little um, foundation on the back. A little, uh, what do you call it? Ladders. We need a little ladder line. Hello there, friend. Okay, get on top. Wow, that's shiny. Apparently the morning sun is very, very bright. Okay, so where are we? We have the foundation piece, which I assume, yeah, it, it's all attached in a very similar way, so it's a shame that isn't perfectly in the middle. How far can we go? Hmm, we could have two on the back like this. I only have one currently in my inventory, but could just go and make another, and that way it would be balanced on both sides. Or we could have the ladder coming out the back. Uh, how much does this overhang the tail? By quite a bit, so okay, yeah, let's do that. Let's have it on the back. So, like... Oh, we could have it double, though. That would be better, because that way we can build... Okay, yeah, we'll have it on double. Let's make it, like, there. Okay, then we'll have another one on the other section. Did I put that a little bit too far to the left? I think I did. Okay, we'll break that down and go and make a couple more. Then we'll go ahead and place those, and that way we can have it too wide the entire way, and just have the stairs coming off one section. Stairs, ladders. Ladders is the thing I'm looking for. Sorry, dead parasaur. We are going to cut down more trees near your corpse. I do apologise. Okay, one more then. Let's just find a small tree somewhere. Any trees over there? Nope. Seems we're going to have to go further into the island. I like how all the parasaurs are respawning, and they're almost all respawning in trees. With very, very few exceptions on this island. This island's trees are really just a death trap. Oh look, a new, um, a new Fiomia spawned in. It's always nice seeing the local animals kind of respawn back in, because it means I can keep on taming them and keep on using them in our little farm eventually. We also need a flag. We do also need a flag. I get to put the foundations there, put the ladders there, and we can start by... and we can start making our little, um mini mini base. You've harvested so much. Okay, so there we go, number four. So you want it halfway, so about here. See, the problem is, at the moment, it's going into that weird um, degraded mode where certain things aren't being shown, like the lines on the metal. Currently, it's like a flat ply. There we go. So you want it about there-ish? And then we can... Not perfectly in the middle, but very, very close. Okay, yeah, that's certainly close enough for me. So, let's put this down then, shall we? Can we pop this down here? It's obstructed? By what? What's... Do I really need... Oh, of course, I need a... Uh, I need a what's-it-called piece of wood. I need a hatch frame. Not, no, not a hatch frame. Almost made the wrong thing then. No, not a catwalk either. Where are you? The thing I actually want. 
Is it the hatch frame? Oh, it is the hatch frame. I thought that was like, oh no, I was thinking of the window piece. Everything is confusing and wrong. Uh, put it back here or put it, put it to the side? It's a bit too far out. But I guess if we had it like that, it means I could put perhaps the ballista on this side. And yes, I am going to have a ballista on this as well. Because they're not all that expensive. It's only metal cost, which is quite easy to get. Particularly with the giant forge Bronto next to us. Climb down so it doesn't hurt me. Haha. -ha. To be fair though, I haven't actually been hurt once jumping off this thing. I think it's just about low enough to not be hurt. But just in case we are like on a slope. Now I don't think these actually clip into into the floor, does it? No, it doesn't. It goes straight through. Excellent. So there we go. We do need to make the Brontos ladder a little bit um, further down because of that. Oh, I only just figured it out recently, so let's quickly make a couple of those. Oh, oh, just one. I thought it needed more. And that way I can just climb up really easily. It just seems more realistic than suddenly teleporting to the top, although of course the teleportation is a lot faster. So there we go, the Bronto's almost done, and we can now start work on our still unnamed new pack animal. So, with all that said and done, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's episode, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Ark Survival Evolved is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Next time, we'll be testing out some more of the new items, testing out hunting with a very high level level Dimorphodon, which will be back at base. I think I've got a level 140 there. And we'll be starting elevator work. One or all of these things will happen soon. Thank you again for watching, and goodbye. Oh, isn't he adorable?